Welcome, everybody. Are, are we ready to go live? Hi, everybody. Those folks that are signed up to speak tonight, if you have something that you want to hand to the board, please do not waste time by trying to pass it around because the clock will start. Hand it to me. I will make sure the board gets it. It will also be posted on board docs. If you have a cell phone, any electro electronic device that makes any noise, I ask that you turn it down so that the folks, when they're testifying, they won't be interrupted. We're going to get started as soon as they're ready in the back room. Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for taking your time to come and uh, testify tonight um, regarding the pr proposed changes to the portfolio. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Santelisis in just a minute. Um, she's going to make some introductory comments and give a little update on, on the process. Um, we then we have a, a we have 43 people signed up to speak. Um, it is our intention to hear from everybody. The meeting is scheduled to run until nine o'clock. Um, we'll see where we are, and um, we did a couple weeks ago, we did extend the meeting because I, it feels important that we hear from everybody who has taken the time to come to speak. Um, so I'll let, us, I'll let you know at the time. But give it that we're going to extend it. Um, I'm going to finish my thought, and then I'm going to open the meeting. I'm sorry I'm doing this out of order, but I just want to finish my thought, um, which I've just lost. So I'd like to take a motion to open the meeting. Uh, Commissioner Berkeley, second by Commissioner Hassan. All in favor? Commissioner Berkeley, Hassan, High Cupboard, Kashani, Chinia, Frank, Bondima. Um, seven approved, two absent. Um, okay. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Santelises. Uh, good morning. Uh, oh God! Oh my God! I feel, I okay. feel vindicated. So, so all I'm going to say for everybody who knows what this means, just pray for me here. Yeah. Okay, it's been one of those weeks. We are of a mind now I'm up back here. in the now. I'm back in the frame. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, for this evening's session, we um, are continuing as uh, Board Chair Kashani has stated to hear from the community with regards to the proposed portfolio decisions. And I do just want to say one or two things first. Um, and I said this last meeting, that it does matter when people come to testify on behalf of um, the community, the school community, parents, families, students, and staffs, um, positions and insights to our proposed um, actions for this year. So I want to thank you all again, particularly the large numbers of young people who are out tonight. I will say I know that it is hard to be out here and make sure that all your homework is done, but I am confident that it is. Um, and also want to let you all know and let the public know that um, the board has been out already visiting school communities that are um, proposed as part of this year's portfolio action. I have been out, and I think that representatives here can verify, I have been out visiting schools, seeing schools. And what I want you to know is that this is part of the process, right? And that we are reflecting on the information we're getting. We are going out. This is not something made in a back room somewhere. We will be continuing the visits. I, for example, have a um, meeting tomorrow night, a community meeting with the Pender Hughes community, um, which I am excited to continue to be able to do. So I, I just want to remind everyone here, remind the public, that this is, in a country where we question the democratic process in so much of what we do these days, that you being here tonight um, matters. It matters in what the final recommendations will be. It does not change the overall direction of where we all want to go as a district, 
but it does inform how we get there. And so I want to appreciate the people already who I have had the conversations with, who have reached out, um, people, families, young people that I have met on visits that I will continue to meet. Um, but I want to let you know, again, that, that we are scheduling meetings with communities. We are reaching out. We do want to hear and that this is a process. And so when we get ready to make, um, when we go, go for the final uh, board vote, um, the, the information we have gathered in the past weeks and in the coming weeks um, will influence those um, final recommendations. So I just wanted to say all that. Again, thank all of the communities that have reached out. Um, and I am looking forward to uh, being uh, with the Pender Hughes community um, tomorrow evening. So thank you very much. And I'll turn it back over to Chair Kashani. Thank you. Um, I want to start by letting everybody know that we have a Spanish interpreter available this evening for members of the public who are Spanish speaking. Ms. Miriam D. Carrion. Uh, can you please raise your hand, Ms. Carrion? Thank you. Um, if you would like to take advantage of this service, please see Ms. Carrion. She's right in the front row. Um, this is a, a emotional time for us. We take this very seriously. It's certainly an emotional time for the general public. Um, and it's my intention to have uh, the room not only filled with people, but filled with respect. Um, so uh, we, we intend to treat you that way. And I think one, one way to respect each other is that, because we have so many people, is that if we could try to stay within the three minute time limit, we know how people, we know how important this is to people. So I think we will, we will hear everybody, um, but let's, let's see if we can't stay within the time limit. I want to start by acknowledging and welcoming Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark as our first speaker. Is she here? She was right there. Okay. All right, so is she close? Mary Pat, you, you want to? Sorry, I was standing, so. No, you're good. Thanks. We're not allowed to be in. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of Coldstream Park Elementary Middle School. Um, my history goes back, well, with every school in my district for decades. Um, but I just want to say the concerns that I have because <clears throat> when I was first a young mother, that's unimaginable in many cases cases, but I was. I had four kids in the Baltimore City Public Schools, and uh, even before all of them were in school yet, I was in the League of Women Voters and went to all the board meetings, which were always at Coldstream Park Elementary Middle School. It has a historic legacy in that way, and I've seen some amazing debates there as a young parent, and then later as a member of the City Council. Um, my concerns are that this is a community school. Its children are from that community. The Chum community has for decades um, taken an active interest in that school, helped them, worked with them. I have seen their caring for the children and the families of the school year after year with, uh, with food. Uh, being given out every week, not just to members of the family, but also to the community at large. Um, it's, a, it's a family affair. Um, I've been served on the family and uh, the school and family council there for years. And once they even let me be on a principal selection committee. Um, I also I just want to make my three, three minutes. I don't want to run out of them. Um, oh, this is wonderful. Would you explain to the city council to do that for me there? Actually, no. Oh, OK. <laughs> but thank you for the, for the compliment. Um, basically, I don't want to use more than my three minutes, however. And, and I would like to say that this is a school that belongs to this community that people graduate from and continue to live in this community. And it's a very important part of the fabric there. Um, I'd also like to, while I'm here, we know this is a tough one, uh, a hard one. It certainly is for me. 
But at a meeting recently that was attended, um, actually, I think it was it was called by the by the neighborhood, but it was but Mr. Mark King came, and he's with the network, um, and it included, and I will read this second page here. Um, uh, Chum Executive Director Mark Washington, who will be speaking later, teachers, staff, parents of students, myself, and Mr. Uh, King. And then there were, as we talked about the school um, and how to turn out and how to try to preserve it, there were discussions, however, from teachers and other people on the staff that I would like to relate to you because they were requests that were made to Mr. King that I hope that you can honor if, unfortunately, this school should close. Um, and they are on the second page of the handout that I hope that you have at this point. And here's what they are. That the Baltimore City Public Schools schedule a jobs fair before the annual system-wide March job fair for displaced teachers and staff of Coldstream Park, and presumably for teachers and staff similarly displaced by other school closures. It's very important because these are veterans and they've done a good job. They do a good job at Coldstream Park. We don't want them to be spread to the four wings, competing with people who are applying for the first time, however worthy they may be. Second, that Coldstream Park's current middle school teachers be transferred to the stadium school, which is going to occupy, if you decide against us here, to see their students through their middle school education by fostering academic continuity and positive self-identity in the midst of being the, the newcomers in a large school where at that age, in any group of children are, are slow to take in the newcomers. So some continuity and togetherness of, so for if a transfer is necessary. And third and finally, that the Coldstream Park name be preserved on the school building so its historic school system and neighborhood roles are reflected as part of the Coldstream Park legacy, especially for the benefit of local Coldstream Homestead Montebello families and graduates. When they po point out to future generations, that's where I went to school, just the way a Clifton Park, a, a Lake Clifton High School, for example, does the same thing today. Um, I hope that you will honor those. Um, requests that were made by teachers who were totally distressed by losing, if it happens, their children that they have loved and taken care of and whom they know every member, every child's parents and family who take care of them. This is a good school and I've loved it for many long years and people will be here to talk about the specifics of it. but. Um, I, I hope that you will consider keeping us whole here. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Pat. We have two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have two people signed up to speak about uh, Blue for Drew Jameson, and there's some, some arrows on here, so I, I, I can't tell what they're trying to tell me. So. Um, we, I have Chance Torrance and Jacqueline Robinson. D are you saying you want to speak together? Or is, is, which one of you wants to speak first? Okay, that's fine. <coughs> are you Chance or? Uh, Jaquan? Great, thanks, Jaquan. Good evening. My name is Jaquan Robinson, and I am a junior at Bluford Drew Jemison STEM Academy. I've been going to Bluford Drew Jemison since the sixth grade, and I have major concerns with the city schools moving out of school. Bluford has a lot to offer, me and my fellow classmates. At Bluford, I learned what it means to be a respectful and responsible young man. 
BDJ has prepared me for the outside world. Moving to school is not just me and my feelings, but I'm also I am concerned about the safety issues. What about the mode of traveling to and from? We have to catch the bus in an unfriendly neighborhood. As scholars, we will fare for our lives, which will result in attendance issues because we will be worrying about being safe. Who wants to go to school when you have to worry about being safe? The kids who know the area or the kids that live around these might take advantage of the fact that we are new and unfamiliar with the neighborhood and set some kids up for failure. We need the school to stay where it is because we know the environment and the community has a rapport with the school. Also, the data shows that students have grown with the school in a positive manner from middle school through high school to graduation. Yes, I said graduation. Last year, we were highlighted as one of the schools in our network with the highest graduation rate. In 2014, we had a graduation rate of 86.27%, and for the class of 2015, it was 86.36%. I could go on by asking the board what's important to you as a district. Is student success important? Is student safety important? Is students at BDJ under BCPSS important? We value BDJ as our school of choice, the environment we want to learn in, and our last step before entering our next phase in life. We ask that you value us by leaving us in our schoolhouse building, well, schoolhouse building, and if you want to see success, put more students in our school instead of putting us in a position to lose the students we have. Thank you and good night. Thank you very much. We'd like to welcome Chance Torrance. Hello, my name is Chance Torrance, and I'm a junior at Blueford Drew Jemison STEM Academy also. I, too, have been going to Blueford since sixth grade. I don't want Blueford to be relocated because I feel as a scholar, BDJ is a place of learning. My teachers not only teach, but for all, for, before an all-boys school, they encourage, they neuter, they reinforce, they polish, and they prepare me to be a man. So many of us have fallen short, but at BDJ, we strive to make it. It's not perfect, but it's all we have. And for some, that's, that's enough. It's our school. Our academics may not be picture perfect, but this is all about the safety of me and my classmates. We have to go to a school for, hold, hold up. The crime rate in Harlem Park is incredibly high. Even though the crime in Baltimore City is at an all-time high, it just doesn't seem right for us to have to go to school fearing for my life. School is the last place I want to go to and have to worry about not feeling safe. I feel that I feel like going to school in a neighborhood where I feel I feel like I want to go to a neighborhood where I feel safe. Based on a recent article in the Baltimore Sun, even the residents of Harlem Park no longer feel safe, and that's their own neighborhood. Why should we be forced to move to a neighborhood where even the people that live there don't want to be? Another reason is I do not want to see the school move to Harlem Park is I've been taught in the same place for six years. I've grown to love the building and the neighborhood. I feel like Bleeford isn't Bleeford anywhere else. Bleeford belongs at Walbrook. Walbrook is really the only place fit for Bleeford. It's his home. Today's, Today's a new day. day. I let, I let go, go yesterday. yesterday. Today I make a plan to do my best. I intend to work to my maximum, maximum potential. I respect with all the signs with diligence and determination. I respect my teachers, my fellow classmates, and most of all myself. To the BJ community, I pledge to show compassion, consideration, and courtesy. This is our daily pledge for success. As community and learners, leaders, and achievers, we disguise the BDJ Academy, dedicate ourselves to become academically excellent and socially responsible. What the core, core value of our, our community. community. Thank you. Thank you. And have a good evening, man. Thank you very much. Now I understand. I now I understand what the little arrows meant that you wanted to stay up there together. Got it. May I'd like to welcome Miss Green.
This evening, I brought with me a letter from my son's therapist. However, I'm requesting it not go in board doc because of the sensitivity of it. There you go. Thank you. This is, I'm going to paraphrase basically what the therapist said because you have it in front of you as soon as you get to it. And um, she said, I'm writing in this letter in support of not relocating Blueford Jew Jemison Academy to the Harlem Park building. I'm a therapist who's been providing services to my client at the Walbrook location. I've been working him with him for a short time, charting his growth and working with his barriers, both personally and educationally. Their safety is a concern of her and how it's going to be detrimental to the children. I had deep discussion with her because I was worried about the safety. I'm very clear. Our fellows, our scholars of Blueford, dress like this every day. We send them over in the Harlem Park area. That's like targeting them to get attacked. Bullets fly, it don't have a name. Let's be honest. Before Blueford came under city control, it was before your time. There was promises made to them. One, the STEM program would be fully funded. City schools would look after them. To date, that has not happened. It's disturbing. We were told if city schools couldn't do it, you would find someone to where they could get their charter status back. We were supposed to come back at the end of the last school year and meet with the parents and the community leaders. That didn't happen. Now this year, our fellows have adapted very well to Principal Durr. He has worked very well with the children. He's got the same relationship with our fellows that Dr. Emery had with them. This board knows that I had very, I was very dissatisfied with the last principal. I was very open about it. I was very honest. I was like, clean it up. Because I felt like it was a failure to the kids. Now our children in the building are worried about where they're going to be at next year. How can you learn when you worry about your safety? The board has given us no options. It's up saying, hey, we're getting ready to place you over Harlem Park where you're going to fight to get to the school building. So you're going to be drained mentally before you can even learn. They're our future. Their education has to come first. Their safety has to come first before a dollar. So my question to the board is, what other options are there out there besides either sending them there and then who's going to accept the responsibility for their safety? Or another location. What is their options? Because now I'm worried about FAPE being violated. FAPE starts getting violated, and then we got problems. Because on our FAPE, it's free, appropriate place education. If you know that safety issue there, lives are put in risk, that's not safe. It's not appropriate. So I'm looking for options for these gentlemen. When I come into the building, I got my son in the building. I treat all of them like they're my children. Hi, how you doing? You good? And they're always respectful to me. So I don't have a problem coming advocating any given time for them because they deserve it. They're, they're a future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to welcome Terrence Pitts. For the record, Terrence is my son. He's a senior at Digital Harvard. But I'll tell him you said hello. <laughs> you know, that's how I read it. But now, it's it, what did you, is it Tanera? It's Tanera. It looks like an. I'm sorry. It looks I'm like so, two R's. I it's, have chicken scratch. I'm, my handwriting's like a serial killer. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe like a doctor. How's that? <laughs> I'll take that. Doctor Pitt sounds good. There you go. Good evening, uh, commissioners, uh, CEO Santalises. I'm actually here, um, can you hear me? On behalf of Ms. Janice Foreman, who is a parent at Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology. It is very important that Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology stays open. Since the data that was used to make this decision to close the school is not entirely accurate, this decision needs to be postponed until new data is reviewed and compared to accurate data information. 
This is not just any school. This is a unique program that by the time students graduate and leave, they are prepared for two of the most lucrative job fields, engineering and technology. If anything, the school should have the support of the community, the school board, and anyone else who may be threatening to close it. Instead of closing the school, they should consider strengthening the program so we can transfer other children to this school to prepare them for a bright future in engineering and technological fields. FATE is a very unique program. It includes a certified engineering teacher for instruction. There are only a handful of certified engineering teachers in the whole district. With the new administration, a dedicated principal, and students who are working to perform better than the other schools in the area that are planned to remain open, we should maximize the opportunity for these, instructor, excuse me, for these instructors to teach our children what they need to know to be successful engineers and work in the technology field. The teachers at FATE meet the students where they are when they arrive and work extremely hard to bring them up to where they need to be. If the children are supposed to be our future, they should at least be allowed to finish their certifications. And those students who are just starting should be able to finish these certifications and fulfill their dreams of becoming engineers or working in these advanced technical fields. The schools that are recommended for these displaced students, if the final decision is made for the school to close, oftentimes will not prepare the students for high opportunity careers in engineering and technology. As a community, we need to ask ourselves, are we really looking out for the children's best interests? And that is from Ms. Janice Foreman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Make Megan Holly. Good evening. My name is Megan Holly, and I am a math teacher at Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology. On November 20th and November 21st, representatives from the district came to explain several reasons why our school was being recommended for closure. One of the reasons why we were recommended to close were park results and low data scores. On November 28th, my instructional lead and I presented park data to the board, showing how our school has outperformed other 6 through 12 schools alike and other city high schools that have entrance requirements. We have also presented data showing substantial growth in other areas of concern, like attendance and graduation rates, as well as lowering our suspension rates. I wanted to present data today through another lens. In your burgundy photos, you can find student iReady data showing significant gains in math for grades 6 and 8 for the 16-17 school year. In all fairness to my hardworking and dedicated students, I believe the school board should consider using this district mandated resource as a measure to ensure equity amongst the students and schools. Friendship does not have interest requirements for students, and 70% of our students are three or more grade levels behind in reading and math when they come to us. Almost 70% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch, and, we're all, and we are a Title I priority school. I truly believe, truly believe we are doing our students a disservice um, as a district by only focusing on standardized test scores rather than recognizing and celebrating the hard work students and teachers put in on a daily basis to grow and push students forward. 80% of my 6th and 8th grade students from last year grew a minimum of 1.5 school years in one year. I wonder if it is equitable to expect students that are functioning on lower elementary levels to pass a grade level standardized test in middle and high school grades. I wanted to come today to represent my students that come to school every single day and trust me to push them beyond what they believe their limit is. I'm here representing my students that stay after school every day for coach class to get extra help to reach their short term and quarterly goals. I want them and this board to know their work is not in vain and that we are working hard at FATE to ensure that every student is meeting with success. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holly. I'd like to welcome Nicole Gibbons.
Good afternoon, everybody. Well, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm here to represent, I'm, well, I'm Nicole Gibbons, here to represent um, French Academy of Engineering and, Te and Technology. I'm reading not just for the school, but also on behalf of the project Lead the Way, one of the instructors, the, the engineering instructor. Um, French Academy of Engineering and Tech, mm, sorry, y'all. FATE is a college-certified Project Lead the Way engineering school. Project Lead the Way is a nationwide standards-based engineering curriculum that is currently available at Friendship Academy, as well as six other high schools in Baltimore City. Courses in this curriculum include Introduction to Engineering Design, Principles of Engineering, Digital Electronics, as well as Specialized Courses in Civil Engineering and Architecture, Computer Integrated Manufacturing, and Computer Science Principles. <clears throat> As a result of being a college certified engineer program, FATE has been able to do the following. A number of students from Friendship have been able to earn college credit on different courses throughout the pathway. Approximately 20 college credits from Rochester Institute of Technology. Students have been able to join four year engineering schools, amongst them being Penn State University, Morgan State University, Embry Riddle Aeronaut Aeronautical University, North Carolina A&T, Harrisburg University, and Capitol College. Some students have elected to go to two-year community colleges and later transferred to four-year colleges. A number of students have had opportunity to do internships or join other premier engineering programs. For example, for example four students have been able to join Northrop Grumman HIP program, an engineering internship program. Two students have participated in Johns Hopkins Engineering Innovative Innovation Program, Summer College Le Le Lever Engineering Program, Level, sorry, Morgan State Engineering Summer Programs. A number of students have had job shadowing with engineering firms. Amongst them are AE Engineering, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Whiting Turner, and WBCM. <coughs> Excuse me. FATE is also a member of the Baltimore City Engineering Alliance a nonprofit organi organization that was created in 2016 to support educational opportunities in engineering for students in Baltimore City Project Lead the Way Pathway. <clears throat> you can also visit our website, <clears throat> um, bceabmore.org, for more information. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Tara... I was gonna. I was gonna say it, Tara Ganges. <laughs> that was my guess. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tara Ganges, and I'm a teacher at Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology. Um, this summer, I was one of the teachers with the Bring Back Baltimore program, and so it was really disappointing to know that all the hard work of increasing enrollment in Baltimore City didn't uh, serve to uh, save my school um, or to the survival of my school. Uh, we've been having an amazing year and this recommendation to close will hurt our school our students and end a success story in the making. The Memorandum of Understanding for School Improvement of August 2017 calls for a targeted support to Baltimore City's pri priority schools with goals of turning schools around and shifting the culture for the better. In the year of being a priority school, Friendship Academy has seen growth in math and reading scores on both the iReady and Park. In addition, 20% more students graduated than the year prior. Though there are problems with school climate and culture, the evidence shows growth despite the challenges we face. But more than that, our school climate has made a massive shift in the 2017-18 school year with improved attendance and a decrease in suspensions. One would think that Friendship Academy is on the path to be the school the school board would brag about when time comes to prove the priority efforts effective. Why close a turnaround school that is actually turning things around? The closure will go against the Baltimore City Schools' responsibilities to commit human, fiscal, and material resources to the implementation of the MOU. Our current and projected growth will not be able to bolster the goals if we close. The Baltimore, the, also the responsibility that the Baltimore City Schools will reduce transient Trans, transients of leadership and, and teachers within priority schools to ensure consistency in building cohort capacity is in question. Closing our school makes the staff and students transient. It continues to prove the public's belief that no one cares about our kids and ensures the belief that our children are not seen as humans with hopes and dreams and the potential to lead the future, but that they're merely numbers or pawns on a chessboard, helpless to the whims of those who deem them disposable. 
one of my brightest students said to me, I feel like they're just throwing us away. He's been depressed ever since the recommendation to close was made public. His talk of college visits and future endeavors has been replaced with phrases like, now I want to drop out, and why not just kill myself? Another student told me that it was pointless to even go to the school board to fight for the school because they've been here before, everyone has all this hope, and then they don't even listen to you. Please let our students continue to grow here at Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology. It will make Baltimore look good with our improving math and reading scores, and it will make our, our kids who are proud to show off their report cards as we had a little love fest in the hallway on report card day feel great about their efforts and results again. Please vote to keep Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology open. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thanks, Ms. Ganges. I'd like to welcome Charles Brooks. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Charles Brooks, and I'm, I run the, the Pride Program at Friendship Academy of Engineering and Technology. The PRIDE program is a special education program designed to provide behavioral and academic supports to students who have been determined in need of those supports due to behavioral issues. This is a program that is staffed by clinicians, a social worker, a psychologist, as well as teachers, a, a paraprofessional, and support staff such as AIDS. First, let me say, that as a team, that I applaud my team for their daily dedication and the hard work that they put in every single day, two of which are here sitting in the audience. As a team, we work to transition students out of the program, find alternative, alternative opportunities for our older students, and we support them in college and career readiness. We have significantly reduced referrals for student incidents related to classroom disruptions, such as fights and physical disruptions. I join my colleagues here, and I wanted to come and talk with you tonight about this program to say that it is a mistake to close this school. This will have a negative impact, not just on the students at Friendship, but particularly on the students in my prior program. These students, my students, in addition to suffering from their diagnosed disabilities, have experienced their share of loss, abandonment, and yes, trauma. I have students who suffer from homelessness, unstable homes, they reside in group homes, in foster care, and have family members, other family members who serve as their guardians. But when they come to school and they interact with the pride staff at Friendship, they are faced and confronted with structure. They are confronted with stability. But more than that, they are confronted with a staff that works very hard for them every single day. This is a staff that works hard to establish relationships. And it is through our building of these relationships that we are able to build and establish trust. We establish confidence. They know that we care. They know that I care. We work with their parents, which is the reason why our program is as successful as it is. When they have problems, they come to me, they come to our psychologist, they come to our social worker to talk about what's going on. Because they know that we are there for them. They know that as a team we will fight for them. We will advocate for them because they know that we support them. In closing, let me say that closing the doors of friendship is a mistake. Schools are supposed to be an institution of stability, structure, and support, not disruption. Closing the school will only result in another round of loss, another layer of trauma that they will have to face. What they need is stability and support, and that is what we provide them at Friendship, and that is what we provide them in the PRIDE program. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Francia O'Connor. Good evening, everyone. 
Good evening. I just want to say a few words for Fayette, not as well as as well as Fayette, but as far as everyone that may be experiencing like these uh, school closings and everything that's been happening in the last couple of years. But as I sat in the overflow room more than a week ago or so, and I listened to other bright students, parents, and advocates of the schools, it came to me how your decisions today might affect our children's future. They will be looked at as a body or a number and not as an individual. The progress that was made in the present, this will probably be overlooked or just looked at as nothing and lie stagnant. To me, it seems like it's all a big setup eventually for failure. Who will look at our children? Who will care for our children? Who will our children look up to? Is what I ask. Will they look up to you? Will they look up to me? Or that person on the corner? What I've seen at Friendship is that I've seen staff work with the children. I've seen the peers actually work with each other. The principals, the teachers that are very hardworking. I see this daily when I go in to check the progress of my children. We want our children to stay in school where they're looked at as individuals, not as a number or not as a seat. We want them to stay in environments where it is safe for them to go to school and not to travel elsewhere. Acknowledgement of small victories and more to come is celebrated actively. My daughter, she talked about her report card, how she was waving around and celebrating it. And my daughter's an eighth grader. So please don't dim the light that shines in the light eyes because I see very something that's special that happens that friendship. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. I'd like to welcome Andrew Ross. Um, Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Santalise, members of the board and the staff, um, my name is uh, Andrew Ross. I'm the CEO of the Children's Guild. And I'd like to go on record supporting the Coldstream Homestead Montebello Neighborhood Association's efforts to grow, stabilize, and uh, further the economic development of its neighborhood. Uh, the way uh, the Monarch uh, Charter School got involved with the uh, Coldstream Homestead Montebello Neighborhood was we wanted to do more than just provide a school. We really wanted to impact uh, a neighborhood as well. And so that was a natural partnership between us and CHUM. And to make that happen, uh, one of the things that we, we've, uh, we've done is not, we have you know, many families that are coming to, the, um, uh, to our school and they're coming from all over the city. And we did our best not to cannibalize uh, the local uh, community schools. So in doing that, We've uh, dedicated ourselves to renovate some houses because we have a lot of families that need housing. Uh, we're doing our best to provide uh, opportunities for jobs through our apprenticeship program uh, and also through our uh, bus company and our cleaning company uh, for buildings. And uh, we've been working with um, Hungry Harvest uh, to bring uh, produce, not only there for our own families, uh, but also for the people in the neighborhood. So uh, it's just a, an effort. I could see that um, the community uh, will grow in terms of the number of kids that are coming there because one of the things we're trying to do is help move uh, families who do not have adequate housing that go to our school and actually come to the, um, uh, see what we have in Chum and uh, renovate houses there and be able to sell them to those families for cheaper than what they can rent. So um, I just wanted you to be aware of that fact that um, uh, that's, that's a part of our partnership with the uh, Chum community and hoping that we can help build the neighborhood rather than cannibalize its schools with a charter school since most of our kids do come from across the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross. 
I want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Delegate Mary Washington invite, and invite uh, Delegate Washington to say a few words if you'd like. If you're here to testify, if you're just here to listen. I'm here to listen and to support my constituents. Thank you very much. Glad you're here. Um, I'd like to welcome Kimberly Tucker. Okay. Um, I'd like to welcome Margaret Hawley. Hi. Good evening, boy. My name is Margaret Hawley, and I'm a parent at William Pender Hughes Elementary Middle School. Although I understand and appreciate the walkthroughs now, I just want to know where were the walkthroughs before the decision was made. In 2004, Our Lady of the Rosary was put on a chopping block by the Archdiocese. And of course, afterwards was the decision to walk through and see how great and wonderful our school was. Our Lady of the Rosary is no longer here. I don't think that it's fair for my kids to experience the rush and the rigmarole that I had to endure my senior year in order to graduate high school. I'm also kind of concerned. A lot of the schools that you guys are talking about closing have a full service type of situation. It's not just about academics there. Most of the schools that y'all talking about closing have a family based type situation. We're feeding them, we're clothing them, we're making sure that the IEPs are straight, we're making sure that the 504s are straight. There's more to just a school than a building and a bunch of kids and a bunch of teachers when you have partnerships and things that really make a school great. I think it's kind of early, if you will, to let our children know they're just nothing but a bunch of numbers. I feel as though this decision was made based upon statistics and not facts because numbers can lie. Numbers can't tell you how one child can come in and the child, everybody knows that child name and everybody knows when the child is sad and everybody knows if the child is moping and they know what's wrong and they know if the child is hungry, they know if maybe mommy didn't come home last night. Like it's impossible for numbers to tell you these things. And this decision, although very calculated possibly, was very unhuman and very cold. For you to tell our children at five, six, seven, eight, years old that their number, their social security number is the reason why they have to move into another school. I don't think that's fair. And pardon me why I, I get emotional or barely upset, but I took my children out of one of the schools in which you are proposing to put them back in because the school was unsafe. I put another child into the same school because another school allow my daughter to be touched and nothing happened. There was no recourse or remorse for what happened to my daughter. None of these things have happened at William Pender Hughes Elementary Middle School. We have the staff that cares. I urge you to not just look at the numbers. I urge you to look at the lives that you're touching. I urge you to look at the families and the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holly. I'd like to welcome back the Witherspoons, Jun Courtley Jr., Courtney Sr. Hello. Hello. If it's okay, could Courtly Jr. start? <laughs> it's certainly okay. Thank you. Nice to um, see you again. Nice to see you too. So, um, hearing what different people said about um, the school shutting now, the first point of it is when my sister went to that her old school, they was touching her and nothing happened. Like my mother said, nothing happened. And then y'all thinking about taking her to another school when nothing's going to happen too? And this is my brother's future. 
This is his future and my future and my sister's future. This is our future. Y'all, y'all past high school, middle school, and elementary school. This is our future you're dealing with. Our future. You're dealing with babies' futures, teenagers, and everything. At, at William Penny's Elementary and Middle School, we have teachers that are like mentors to us, like Mr. Deju and Miss March and other teachers I'm not going to talk about right now. But at the same time, we have teachers that care about us. And I bet at Gilmore's, the teachers there, they're going to let us get hit. And if we walk into Gilmore, there's drug dealers. There's, there's stuff that we don't need to see over there. And I think for y'all to make this decision about shutting down our school, and if some of the parents already knew that it was going to combine, but we didn't know that Gil William Penn was going to shut down. We thought Gilmore was. We thought Gilmore was the school that had the low ratings and did not have a lot of students. But now y'all going to tell us that our school is not the school to go to? Are y'all saying, oh, we should go to other school? No, Gilmore, I mean, um, William Pendy uses the place to be. We have staff. The principal, Mr. Adams, he he pushes us to our best. Even the teachers. We I stay over there and 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 the teachers are there until the until the day is over. I look in there and I see my teacher and he's talking to my some some other classmates of mine. And I say, Wow, this got I got trying to shut down this school. This school has people that care. This school has people that will help us through our life. This school is a school that will not let any of us get shot. This school has all, they have teachers that care about us and our life. This school has staff that just don't care about when we're walking down home. They, they, they walk with us and at Elevate 8, they have, they they have people that will walk, they they walk with us home, so that is my point of try y'all trying to shut down my school. Before you before you speak, Courtly Courtly, can you remind us of what grade you're in? Third. Third. Yeah. Wow. If you just pick up, maybe if you just pick it up, it, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Madam Administrator, and is I'm not used. To, I don't need these normally, but. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Administrator, uh, uh, Madam CEO, members of the board, I, I want to start by saying thank you for something because I know that sometimes you all don't get thanked. I want to acknowledge the fact that we've heard that our CEO did visit our school, and so we say thank you. And we also know that members of the board also visited our school, and so we say thank you. What I wanted to say is that what we recognize is, is that we have two schools in a very close proximity of each other. We recognize that. And we recognize that the board has some very tough decisions to make. We know that you're providing for two separate buildings. What we wanted to take the opportunity to say as a community is having known what this particular issue is, we want to make an appeal today before this board for a stay for at least 12 to 16 months for the purposes of affording us the opportunity. And this is what we have a plan here that we as a community have taken the leadership to do because that's the kind of thing that happens when you engage communities. We have ideas just like you all do and hopefully we can come together and put our ideas together and come up with a plan that works for the entire city. So we wanted to get a stay for 12 to 16 months so that we can get the communities, the two schools together so that we can begin to start doing some activities. We can begin to start looking at opportunities to begin to start saying, look, we have this issue in terms of two schools in close proximity of each other, but let us begin to talk, let us begin to break bread together and look at the future of Sandtown. Let's not look at just Gilmore or let's not just look at William Penderhues, although we're definitely for William Penderhues. However, it's important for us to begin to have this 12 to 16 month time to get to know each other and to begin to hopefully look at the future 
of a sand town that works for everybody. The second piece we're proposing is a work group. A work group comprised of community stakeholders from schools associ from, uh, associated with William Penderhughes as well as Gilmore Elementary School. We're talking about ministers. We're talking about community people. We're talking about students. We're talking about teachers. We're talking about business owners. Everybody who was involved in the community that has a hand in how that community functions and how they would receive our kids moving to a hopefully a group combined school situation that whereas as opposed to funding two schools in close proximity to, to, to each other, you can have those funds going into one school to make a school that really has a major impact. And that goes down to the other recommendation that we have, working towards creating a plan to create a world-class school in Sandtown. And this would come after the uprising that took place that shattered Sandtown, a new school that had STEM programs, a new school that had a trades program, a new school that would have a situation where we'd be able to culture and, and, and uh, be able to uh, nurture GT stuff, gifted and talented stuff from students that are doing positive stuff, and also making sure that we can have Saturday programming but not just for students, also for parents, looking at financial literacy stuff, looking at GED stuff, and looking at the type of things that transforms a school beyond the walls of a school and becomes a hub to a community. And that's exactly what Sandtown needs to glue itself together after that 2015 uprising. So there are a few other people that have something to say, but we make an appeal to you today that is not emotional. One where we understand that there's some tough things that have to do, but we ask to be involved at the table on the front end and throughout the duration so we can work together with our friends, our families, and our neighbors to do what's right for Sandtown. And I'm going to say this before I shut down. We are not opposed to Gilmore because what we know is that some of the people who attend William Pender Hughes are residents of Gilmore. So we are not anti-Gilmore. We are certainly pro-William Penderhughes, but we believe it's time for us to come together because we are cousins anyhow, and we are all saying town, and we all care about the future of our community. Thank you. Now, the... Hello, are, my name is Kimberly oh, Tucker. I'm sorry. Have if a, I could. Have the, are people signed up yes, to... Sir. Yes, ma'am, they're all signed up. All right, so if, if you could just, yeah, if you could just tell us your name like you were just about to, then I'll, we'll keep track of it that way. I to interject. We have a letter from State Delegate Antonio Hayes uh, in support that I wanted to submit for the record, and also a letter that's coming from State Delegate uh, Nick Mosby, and of course, Senator Barbara Robinson was here last week, and Councilman Leon Pinkett, but I just wanted to make sure this was submitted to the record. Thank okay. you. Hello, my name is Kimberly Tucker. Um, I'm a grandparent of a student that attends Gilmore um, Elementary. Um, my concern is with the fact of Pender Hughes possibly being closed down and, you know, um, some half of those kids attending Gilmore School is an issue for me. We, that school just came out of a situation where they had to hire a teacher because they had a classroom overcrowded with um, kindergartens, 50 kindergartens in one classroom, which is, which is outrageous. And I feel like you adding more kids to that school can potentially put them back in the same position again with a classroom being overcrowded. I understand that you're saying that the school is possibly closing because one of the reasons, um, not enough children filling up the school, but at the same token, putting, taking kids, closing down one school and placing kids in another school, is, um, to me, is not making it any better because you're still overcrowding the classrooms. I really think it's a problem to have 30-something children in one classroom. I go to my son, I go to my grandson's school every morning, and it's a total of 15 kids in his class. He's a pre-K. And half of those kids, I watch how the teacher have to spend half of their morning trying to get these kids to calm down and get them together to, get, to, to be able to prepare to teach the class. You have some kids that are already ready to be taught, but then you have these kids that they have to spend half of their morning trying to get together to get under control for them to teach. So when you add even more kids into these classrooms, that just creates more problems. 
So how are these children all supposed to learn when you have a classroom full of kids that's overcrowded and then you have one, you have two, you have two adults in this classroom to teach these kids, but one is constantly being poured out all the time because you have other staff members, other teachers that's calling out all the time. So now you have that teacher left in that classroom to deal with 15 children by herself. How was she supposed to be able to teach? How can the other kids be able to learn when the teacher is spending more time trying to get the behavior of children under control? You're not able to. You're not able to teach the ones that do want to learn. So I think it's. I mean, it has to be a better solution than just shutting down the schools because you shut down one school to overcrowd another one, and that doesn't help. Something and and, and that's another issue: the bullying. Something has to be done. You shouldn't have to sit and watch the news and look at these and look at these kids crying because they're being bullied. Or watching the news hearing about somebody's child committed suicide because they're being bullied. Something has to be done. We need more resources in these schools. You know, more social workers, psychiatrists, psychologists, because they need it. It's bad enough these kids feel like they're not being heard at home. Don't make them feel like they're not being heard here when they're complaining about the things that's going on in this school. At least show them that you care. A lot of them don't get that care or support at home. Please show them that you do care here. Please show them that you do care about their future and their safety, their education. Find better solutions. Thank That's you. all I have to say. Thank you very much. Hi. Good evening. Um, Good evening. My name is my name is Dorian McEachin, and uh, uh, I just want to tell you that uh, the reason the reasons why I don't want you to um, close my school because my school is great, and and I I don't want to go to Gilmore Elementary School. My school has. Air conditionings, which makes us cool down, and that's what Gilmore does have. Um, at at my school, which is William many years, uh, I I can do my favorite activities like drama and dance, and at any at the school program. This. This is why I don't want you to close down my school. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. You, you can stay. You can stay. Are you, are you Jamari? Great. Welcome. Hello. My name is Jamari. Today I will be talking about how my student, I mean, my school is important to us students. At my school, I am in the Elevate program where I am able to have fun playing football, which is my favorite sport. And plus, I'm new. This is my first year. So I'm experiencing how this school works out and how you're trying to close this school and then make me make us see the bad stuff that we heard about Gilmore Elementary. I think this is true because we, will, we would, who would want to lie just to keep our school open? They want, they want to speak from their heart and what they have experienced about Gilmore Elementary. Thank you for my, thank you for your time. Thank you, gentlemen. Can you share with us? Can you share with us what grade you're in? Fourth. Fourth. You're both in fourth grade. Terrific. Thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us. I want to acknowledge that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, well, no, you're, uh, you're good. Yes, I was also included in that group as well, but I did sign up you're individually. Fine. You're um, fine. My testimony will be in the form of a video. 
um, William Pender Hughes has a video submitted that was created um, by the staff and the parents of William Pender Hughes. And we would also like to acknowledge uh, Councilman Pinkett, who is also in support of us as that's well. That's actually exactly what I was just going to do. So you, that's what I interrupted you. I didn't mean to. So uh, welcome, so Councilman Pinkett. That's what we're going to now. <laughs> but could you say your name? My name is Danielle Williams. Great. Thank you, Danielle. You're welcome. I assume, I assume we have a video. Do we have a video? Joe, can we play the video? Cool. Sorry? I was going to ask him after the video. Hi, the uh, video is available on Board Docs. As per rule, we don't show videos during public comment. So um, it's available to everybody on board docs. I assume it's in the public's. I don't know. I, that's. I don't. Say what you're thinking. I I would prefer to waive board rules and see the video. Do we have an? If our, Joe, please play the video. Are board people cool with that? I, you know. So, Councilman Pinkett, while we're loading the video, would you like to um, say a few words? Thank you. Could you hit your, yeah, your button? Thank you. You must have been reading my mind. So, um, uh, thank you um, for allowing me to, to speak. I, um, I had an opportunity to testify in the initial hearing, so I won't repeat my comments. But um, I really came for two reasons tonight, um, well, three, actually, to support um, the students and family uh, of William Penderhues um, is my primary goal. Uh, the second is I, I actually came to support the board this evening. Um, you are faced with some difficult decisions, some difficult tasks. Um, and I know that it has to be um, difficult to, at this time, um, not accept the recommendation to close William Penderhues. And Enter, allow the community and the school system to enter into what I would believe could be a collaborative process to really address um, the future of education in the Sandtown Winchester community. Um, but while, it's a diff while I believe it could be a difficult decision, I believe it's the right decision. I, be I believe it's the decision that is in the best interest of our system, um, best interest of our community, and most importantly, it's the best interest of our students. So while it is, I believe, a difficult decision, I, I, I've come to support you in that decision and hope that um, the testimonies that you've heard over the past several weeks um, will help you make that decision more easily. Uh, the third reason I've come is because, um, unfortunately, I, in this particular portfolio review, I have several schools that are being impacted. And another of the schools is the Bluford Drew Jemison STEM Academy. And um, which is being considered for relocation to Harlem Park. Um, the curriculum at that school is unique to the system. I believe it's the only all-male school in, in the system, and, and probably the only all-male school that is focused on STEM, maybe even in the state, um, which is a unique and um, extremely uh, valuable program to our um, community and to our city. Um, I am of the opinion if we, re if we relocate that program to Harlem Park, um, essentially what we are doing is closing that school and, and, and uh, eliminating that program. I, I don't believe that it will survive um, at Harlem Park. I believe that um, a program such as it, which is valuable to our system, ultimately will die a slow death. Um, I believe that um, instead of relocating it, uh, Bluford Drew Jemison STEM provides for us the opportunity to really expand that program and to grow it. Um, if, the, if the current space is too large for that, that I think that's an opportunity for us to um, enhance the program to the level where it needs to be and make it a model school for attracting and, and giving opportunities for um, our young black males throughout the city. Um, it, can, it can be a great magnet. It can be a tremendous asset to our community. And I believe that instead of relocating it, our focus should be how do we make this the best school that it can possibly be. So I, I just thank you for that opportunity, um, and I appreciate everything that you all are doing for our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Pinkett.
So it looks like the video is teed up. They are free to laugh and play here in the middle of one of Baltimore's most crime-ridden neighborhoods. Yet plans to shut down William Penderhughes Elementary Middle School in West Baltimore may force them elsewhere next fall. Do you believe in me? Do you believe in my classmates and my friends? Do you think I truly deserve the best? Look at our faces, every single one of our faces. How can you tell me that this place I call home should be closed? A place where I can build lasting friendships and where I have new experiences. Where the teachers and the students here are my family. Being here makes me feel safe. I love William Penderhughes because the people here believe in me. They know me and they love me for who I am. I grew up here and can't imagine having to go anywhere else. Here there are programs to help me learn more than just math and reading. Here I have the chance to sing and to dance and to build and to make and to challenge myself to be more than what the world says I should be. Sandtown is more than just a few blocks. It's where we live, it's where we grow, it's where we learn, it's where we are inspired to be more and to do more. Sandtown can be an amazing place and together we can make it even better. We can work together to create a school for all the children in Sandtown. A school with options for everyone, not just a few. We want to be in a Sandtown community school we can be proud of, where the students all respect each other for who they are, where we can have long-lasting friendships, where we can be free to be ourselves and know that you will have our backs. We want you to give us a chance, a chance to work out a plan for a community school that works for all of Sandtown. Can you do that for me? Thank you, Ms. Williams, for making that available to us. We appreciate that. Um, I'd like to welcome Yasmin Taylor. I don't think I could beat that video, but uh, I think we, that speaks entirely for itself. You work at the school. Excuse me? You work at the school. Yes, and I also have two children that attend William Fender Hughes. I'm sorry. And one of them you just heard speak, Jomari Taylor. He's in the fourth oh, grade the as well. Um, basically, um, just some few words. Good evening to everyone. Um, I'm just here to speak on behalf of the parents and the students at William Penn Hughes. And yes, I do work there as well. And I have two children that attend. One is in first grade and one is in the fourth grade. Um, and just to make it short and sweet, um, I'm just hoping and praying that all of our voices are heard and being kept in consideration, just like money and numbers are being kept in consideration. Um, over the years, administration has worked very hard to keep our school being a success and flourish. There is an overwhelming abundance of support, engagement, and interaction with the students and with the parents as well. This creates a feeling of belonging, a positive and caring space, and an open door. Why would you want to take that away? It is like a home. Would you want to make hundreds of kids feel homeless? Some of our kids are homeless, and William Penderhughes is their home and have made that their home, as well as the parents. Again, why would you want to take that away? There are many programs that are offered to help our kids grow, Elevate, which is an after-school program that offers them recreational activities that can be found in a community because um, there are not many rec centers for them. Why? Because the city has closed most of them. They also have a girls and boys mentoring program that offers enrichment and resources for our kids. Point being, keep a school alive that is making sure our kids stay alive, educated, and being motivated to become a success in a community that needs security and reassurance that they have William Penderhughes as a resource and guide to help them flourish. And that's the end of my statement. Thank you, Yasmin. You're welcome. Um, we'd like to welcome Elijah Etheridge. Good evening. Uh, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Santalisas, 
I come to you this evening with my colleague, Dr. Durant, uh, to once again talk on behalf of Independence School. Um, I want to thank the members of the board that came the other day to visit the school. I want to th thank Dr. Santelisis for coming to the school. You know, two weeks ago when we came before the board, we uh, uh, brought comments about the SER report that was given to you all about our school. But I believe after visiting the school, um, and I am hoping that, that you left the school kind of scratching your head a little bit about uh, the disparity between what was written in the report and the actual facts of what you witnessed when you came to the school. However, we own every single bit of our school's failure as it relates to its academic program. We know that there are some material weaknesses. Dr. Santelisa spent an inordinate amount of time at the school, taking time to meet with the teachers, with the students, and taking a look at the school and, and uh, uh, looking at some of the projects that the students had done. And she was not pleased with some of what she saw. Neither are we. As the operator, as the executive director of Baltimore Teacher Network, we too have a lot of issues. I do want to let you know that the school has suffered or experienced, I won't say suffered, has experienced a, a, a few things, not as an excuse, but in the past three years, the school not only was displaced to the LaMail campus, it went under leadership change, mm -hmm. and seven out of ten teachers left the school and refused to come to the LaMail campus. So the school had to restaff up, and they have gone through a kind of like a, a learning curve. So that is not an excuse, but is the actual facts of what the school has experienced. Mm -hmm. But I believe that you had witnessed that the school is worthy of, uh, of a second chance, and I, ho I hope that that's what you have you've witnessed when you visited the school. I do want to say one last comment before my time expires for all schools that are being considered for closure. And that is that this board should, and I believe you do, but I'm just stating it for the record, inspect what you expect. I need to do more of that back at my, my shop, mm -hmm. inspect what I expect. But as I said at the last time that I was here, that it would be good to get visits from the district. As an, a charter school operator, I welcome visits from the district mm -hmm. to keep an eye on the school, to let us know when we're not making the mark. We don't want to know that when it's time for renewal. It's a little bit too late. We, we like to know that beforehand, and we would welcome that. I don't know about anybody else, but I would welcome hearing those comments from O&I and from anyone else who would want to come and visit the school to let us know to inspect what you expect and if we're not making the mark. So I thank you very much for your time, and I'm still hoping that we will have a favorable decision on the 19th of December. Thank you very much. Thank you. I apologize. I have to step away for just a minute. I'm going to ask uh, the chair of our teaching and learning committee, Commissioner Chinia, to run the next. Um, our next speaker I have listed here is uh, Linda Harrison. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Board of Commissioners, Dr. Santalises. I am Linda Harrison, Director of Senior Workforce at Baltimore Teacher Network. I must honestly, from my perspective and what I've seen, Independence is a remarkable school. It honestly is. Our school offers our students a very well-rounded education. The students have a great potential, and yes, we have students that come to us with various deficits, but we have a program that's designed that caters to our students' needs. It helps them to learn, to think, to understand, and to share, and to live in viable lives in this community. These are some of the things that we teach. 
and I have to be honest with you, the teachers are really very incredible. They spend a lot of quality time preparing their lesson plans, and it's catered to every student. And what I want to let you know, what brings me to the school is that I have senior citizens that are working in these schools. And these students come to this school looking for them, calling them grandma. They greet them in the morning, good morning, grandma. Sometimes they hug them, sometimes they kiss them, and that sets the stage for them to enter their classroom with a smile. I have to tell you, this is an incredible school, and I pray that you give them an opportunity to continue and to increase some of the good things that they have to offer. And this helps the students in a lot of beautiful ways to become uh, adults as they're growing up in the community. Independence does matter. We need this school in our community. For some students and parents, they feel that this is their last hope. Independence is their last hope for a good education. Let's please help this school to survive. They have things to offer. The teachers have a lot to offer, and they love their school. The parents, the teachers, the students, the seniors, they all are family-like life experiences there, and they offer this to them. Please invest in our survival, and I do believe that you're going to see some wonderful, great things in the future coming out of our schools. Just give us a chance. We have a lot to offer. We know where we need to go, and we're planning. We're in the planning stages of going forward with a lot of great things for the students. So I just have to st say that our students are worth it. They want to be here. We want to be here. We want them here and we love them. Please give us a chance. Please help us to survive. Please let's not send them back out into the wolves. All right. This is the school. This is where they want to come. They want to be here, honestly. They love us. We love them. Independence lives. Please let it live. Please show that you care. We do care. We love independence. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Uh, Dr. Ron Howell. Good evening. I'm going to be reading a letter that was submitted by our board president, Matt Warnsdorfer, and then I'm going to allow an alumni from Independence to have the last say so. The Baltimore Teacher Network is submitting a corrective action plan as a response to the Board of School Commissioners' concerns as articulated in the SY17 review. We believe this plan acknowledges the severity of the concerns expressed in the review process, provides substantive and realistic plans for addressing these concerns, and draws on the significant and acknowledged strengths of independence community. Our plan inf involves three major objectives. Number one, strengthen the management structure overseeing independence to ensure school leadership is held to a better account in ensuring quality instruction, management, and partnership with the school district. Number two, ensure strong leadership at the school level with clear expectations in the immediate and the, for the future to build school level structure to increase academic program, programming rigor submitted in previous uh, documents to the board. In addition, we want the board to understand that we gratefully uh, appreciate your feedback. We appreciate the clear and critical dialogue with the commissioners up to this point, both because we both because the criticism makes us a better school community and because it acknowledges the deep strengths of our work. Independence Local is a school where students and staff are respected, one where they feel a deep connection to their community, and one where we are focused on the very same thing as the Board School of Commissioners. We respectfully request that the Board trust the school community, the community, and Baltimore Teacher Network to take your concerns seriously and address them as they best fits the needs of our students. Hello. <laughs> so I used to go to Independence back in 2015. That's when I graduated, my bad. I had went there in 2011 when Dr. Howell. <laughs> when Dr. Howell wasn't even there. So I had just met him like two years ago. Well, no, it's been like four years ago now. I'm sorry. Four years ago. So basically he had called me up to like last week and said, could I come speak on Independence? And I said, sure, because 
Independence is a real good school. I'm not even going to lie. First, I didn't even want to go there because it was a little trailer. I was like, I don't want to go here. But then when I got to actually to go to the school to meet my teacher, Roz, I was like, no, I'm going to stay now because I really, really enjoyed it. But over the years, they had changed several things now, but it was good changes. Ms. Mullen, she's back there in the audience. She is one of the best teachers there. Like, I love Ms. Mullen to death. Yes. You see how that? Say yes again. Yes. Yes. Thank you all. Please just keep it open. Like, I'd go there like twice a year just to visit Ms. Mullen, Ms. Sherry, to visit all of them to see how they're doing. Some of them I got even on Facebook. I can't see Ross because Ross not there no more. I see Ross on Facebook all the time. He retired now. He was 60, how was he? 66. He was 66 years old, still teaching us. Right now he's enjoying his retiring. He's traveling the world. So just please keep it open, because I go there and visit all the time. And I take my son as well sometimes. Yes. I just want to say one last thing, that she is one of our alum that has gone on to the career world. And following her, you will hear from another alum that's gone on to college. Thank you oh. for your time. Oh, yeah, I Thank forgot you. I had went to college. And I had did my IT program and certification. So independence does rule. Woo! I'd like to welcome Dorian Walker. Or I think I might have gotten the last name wrong. Did I get the last name wrong? It's Walker. Oh, okay. Good evening. My name is Patrice Meekins, and I'm Dorian's mom. He is a graduate of Independence High School this year in May. Dorian applied and was accepted into Johnson and Wales University in Rhode Island, but he decided to stay close to home and go to Capital College, um, of Capital College University in Laurel. Uh, when Dorian applied, I really didn't want him to go to the school because it felt like it was a small school, but he was accepted into Crystal Ray. I let him make the decision to go to Independence. We love Independence. We love Dr. Howe. We love everyone that's there, the principal. Um, it's a small school. It, it actually caters to a lot of young people and small class groups, so it's not, not like 30 or 40 kids there. So that's one of the reasons why we came tonight to support Independence, to make sure they keep that school open. Hello, my name is Dorian Walker, and I have a couple points here to talk about uh, and why I want the school to stay open. Uh, one point is hands-on learning. So they had a gardening club there, and they would teach you how to plant stuff and grow, grow vegetables and fruits for you to eat. Uh, and I took those skills home and started planting and growing tomatoes. And then uh, one day I looked out back in my garden, and I seen a tomato growing, and I put that into my food. So that's another skill that you learned there. Um, uh, another point is outside opportunities. So one program at Independence was the chill program. They teach you how to snowboard and other various snowing, skiing opportunities. And they teach you how to do different things. Um, another opportunity is Outward Bound. So instead of having a regular gym credit, <coughs> they would use the going out for a five, what, a one, one week trip out to the wilderness to do kayaking, biking, um, canoeing, and hiking as their gym credit. And during those times, they would actually teach you how to do skills like cooking outside, um, putting up tents, and stuff like that. So um, along with leadership skills, they, on, give me a second. along with leadership skills, the school allowed me to do a two-year internship with the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Um, community Engagement Center. They also helped me further my college decision and plan and pick, pick up social services skills to put on my resume. And lastly, what I have to say is, I understand that academics and statistics is a big part of learning, but teaching kids and students life skills and leadership skills should be a part of that too. This will and, sh this will and should shape their academic foundations for, with fortitude. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Asia Anter. Did I say that right? Did I say your name correctly, Asia? 
is it Asia? It's Arthur. Asia Arthur. Oh, Arthur. Okay. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Asia. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Asia. I am a current junior at Independence. My mother had previously spoke at the last board meeting stating that I was diagnosed with ADHD at an early age and I struggled in, ele in elementary and middle school for a long time with my academics and focusing on my work and I needed medication to be able to concentrate and not be distracted to accomplish my work. When I came to Independence due to the small contained classrooms and support from my teachers, from my ninth grade to 11th grade I was able to control my ADHD and come off my medicine. I now no longer take ADHD medicine and I now get all A's and B's and a college level GPA. I now am able to take care, take college classes at Coppin State. I have come a long way in independence and hope to finish my high school years off on a good note and continue big accomplishments as I grow into a young adult and attend a good college. Independence school matters. Please don't close the school because if you close the school, I will be in a high school with at least 50 to 30 classrooms with a lot of kids and I can't concentrate like that. In this school, the teachers support you. If you need anything like personal help at home, they help you. They actually care about you versus going to another school that doesn't and you're just a number. So please do not close down the school. I really like it. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Catherine Stewart. Uh, good evening. Hi, Catherine. My name is uh, Catherine Stewart, and I have been here before to uh, tell you why you shouldn't close our school. Um, today, I want to talk about the accomplishments I have. Um, achieved during um, independence. Um, I was honored and able to attend a 2016 gala to read my poetry. I also have had a first debut in DC doing my poetry as well. And I have another poem to share with you guys today. It's called My Eyes. My eyes can see the lies within your eyes, and my eyes can see when I cry and tell me that I am human. My eyes can see a new baby born then die. My eyes can see the murder rate climb. My eyes can see my mother or father surviving cancer in my eyes. Can see different races of girls being snatched up, some never found. My eyes can see animals being slaughtered by the pound. My eyes can see girls getting raped on Instagram and Facebook live. My eyes can see homeless people asking for food and spare change. My eyes can see a dropout every minute, and my eyes can see a suicidal killing every second. My eyes can see the lines between truth and false, and my eyes can see the grief in your chest. My eyes can see a life lost and an opportunity gained. My eyes can see good grains grown through your tree, and my eyes can see a vision being built. My eyes can see your eyes closed, and my eyes can are the same as yours, just a different shape or color. Independence matters. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. I come to you speaking from the heart again as I did last time. Um, over these past few months um, at Independence, I've realized that this is more than just a school. It is kind of somewhat of a family. As I said last time, I love Independence. I love my peers and my teachers. Um, our exhibitions were just finished and some of my teachers did help me with a few of them. So I was able to can um, understand most of the exhibitions that we just had and I'm a freshman so this is my first year at Independence and I do not want it to be my last I mean so far for this past few months I've had a lot of fun at Independence with some of the students and the teachers um, Dr. Stanley 
is our dean and also the um, language arts teacher and also dan um, act like actor type teacher. So we are learning how to do like a play from February for um, the Black History Month that most of us are in. And I would like to perform, and I would like to be inside more of those activities. And he also has a bigger activity for us to do like movies and stuff like that also increasing in the years. And as a few of the um, other students said about trips inside Independence, I would also like to um, be inside part of the, inside those trips as well and attend as a student. And I would also like to see the school grow, as I said before, inside, because I already seen myself growing. I have more friends than I um, had inside previous school years. I'm not struggling as much anymore. And I, um, I've, I've grown close to this school and to some of the students here. A few of them are here today. Um, <laughs> their opinions all rise. <laughs> so we can, uh, so, I was serious about that. <laughs> Okay. This is my family. This is the students and staff that I would like to grow up with for the rest of my ninth grade year and for the rest of high school. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kevin Kane, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. 24. Good day. Good evening. My name is Good Kevin evening. Kane, and this is my first year in first year in high school, and this and this is my first year in high school, and this. And independence helped me in everything. It helped me in academics, learning, and keeping focus. And at my old school, that didn't help me. Okay. I'm just going to move this a little bit closer to you so they can hear you. Okay. You don't have to touch it. It's okay. It's okay. Great. You should be able to hear you better. Okay. Take your time when you're ready. You can start again. Mm. Okay. Let me restart. Good evening. My name is Kevin Kane, and I'm from Independence Local One High School, and I'm in ninth grade, fresh, well, whatever. But it's my first year in high school, and I have learned a lot of experience in high school and how it performed. First, I was scared. Like, I don't know what happened, what to do, how my grades going to be, but it, independence, independence helped me through everything, help me through academics, learning, and through life. And all, basically like all the teachers like hope everybody keep us, keep the students moving forward and all my family and I'll do anything for them. And, and that's like two Fridays ago we had, I could, yeah. I acted something forgot, but that's through Fridays we had an event that hope that basically like review what people did in classes and basically like the student no the teachers and the parents was proud of the students of having having done work and see people doing stuff in class and I just want to say please don't close the independence down we need this and. Some people, like, in this school, some people are not going to make it in the real world. I'm just being honest. I'm trying to hope everybody, please don't close independence. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I'd like to welcome Crystal Foster. Is Crystal here? Or do we think she left? She probably stepped up. 
if, if you could just point her out when she comes back in, we'll just move her into another slot. Um, Darian Lizanow? Lizanu? I think I, th I think I think they call that an entrance. Oh wait a minute, I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. But you should pick one microphone and put it, like maybe in front of you. There you go. All right. You're good. There you go. Okay. Hi, I'm Crystal Foster. Um, I'm a mother of three. Um, all three of my children went to Coltrane Park Elementary. Um, my son is a sophomore in high school now. Excuse me. I had to run. I had to get myself together. All right. um, so from time to time, my son actually goes back to Coldstream to visit all his teachers. Actually, Ms. Hayes is behind me now. Christopher goes back, visit them. Uh, my daughter, she um, has problems with testing. So Coldstream, like Ms. Mary Paul Clark said, is more family oriented. I feel like if you close Coldstream Park, you're for one, I'm going to be honest with you, you're going to lose my children because they're not going to eat it. None of the schools says they're going to put them in. Um, you have, what's this, four schools, less than a five block radius. Monarch, most of the children from Coastrain, Abbotson are in Monarch now. So if you have schools that's right across the street from each other, you're going to lose students. So I don't think that Coastrain need to close, which I think is something that needs to be implemented to bring better resources because nowadays all the kids are high have is charter schools nothing is being done to the actual Baltimore City schools so in which most of the charter schools are lotteries so my child don't qualify to get in most of the schools because of the lottery so they have to be picked so they don't get extra help or they don't get certain resources because they're not picked we need to try to bring more resources to the schools that already exist now, me, I didn't go to Cold Stream, but I went to Montebello. I lived in 21218 my whole life. So it always been Montebello, Cold Stream, and what's the Abbotson community, whatever. Cold Stream is a staple in the community. I went there. I go vote there. My children been there, like I said before. I honestly don't think Cold Stream needs to close. I'm done. Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. <laughs> So is, is Darian here? Good evening. Um, I'm Darian Lazama, and I'm from Independent School Local 1. My mom was here last time in the previous board meeting, and she told me that, and she already told all of you that I had an anxiety disorder. And I also have a sort of hearing disorder where it will hurt my ears at um, certain lower sound than normal people. So when it comes to larger schools, it's hard trying to um, fit in or learn there because it'll be so loud and it'll be so cramped that I'll start to have anxiety attacks and I'll start to uh, get worried and I'll just ignore everything to help. When I came to this school, however, it was a lot different. It was a lot smart, smaller and it had more um, it had more understand students and every student that I was there I didn't just see some other class student I don't I saw a classmate or family member or sibling because they're all understanding to me I'll, all of them do not treat my disorder as if it was some type of f freak uh, attribute of me it they treat it like it was some sort of <laughs> It was some sort of um, way of, it was some sort of way to, to describe me. 
And seeing that the school is closing, I was more afraid of how I'll be if I go to a normal, a normal school, a public school. Because being there will be like just being inside an entire jail cell where I will never learn anything and all I'll think of is every student is going to bully me or every student is going to not never understand me. Even the teachers here won't be the same if I went to a bigger school. Each teacher I've met, they would understand me and try their best to help me learn there. They don't try to learn every student. They don't try to learn to teach every student the same way. They let every other student have their own way. It's like a giant Lego and each individual student is its own Lego. It's different in a sort of way. It has more, it might be in a different color, different size, different shape, but they all fit. And sure, the school's not perfect, but uh, as I saw with this new freshman school, they're all they're all acting better than I believe you guys will see. So I think if I wanted to end this, I would ask a question. Would you rather send a student into an environment they're forced to adapt or let that student choose a school that will fit them? Thank you. I didn't speak at the last meeting. Um, my wife did, but I do want to interject that my son, the other schools that he went, attended, he made excuses pretty much daily <clears throat> of just not to go to school. He didn't want to go to school, so he made excuses day after day after day. This school, he doesn't make excuses. He wants to go to school. So I just want to add that to uh, you know, the, what's going on here. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Darian, to you and your family. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Zay Smith. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Zed Smith. Uh, I'm a very concerned business person here in Baltimore. I'm a resident of Baltimore. I'm the CEO, uh, COO of a company here. We employ about 6,000 people in the metropolitan area. I'm here to speak on behalf of Buford View Jameson STEM Academy. I've been involved in education here in Baltimore for about the last 10 years. I'm a founding member of the Urban Alliance of Baltimore. It's a member, uh, mentoring program here in Baltimore. Uh, personally, I've always made it a point to uh, mentor young men of color in our city because I do believe that that's so important and so vital to the long-term viability of our city. Uh, within the last four years, I've been really focused on trying to understand how we can change the, the trajectory of young men in our city. I do see that as being our biggest challenge in our city. And uh, I was introduced to uh, Buford Jameson, uh, I guess about three years ago. I was very intrigued by the work that they were doing there. And as a result, I began to work with them to try to figure out how we can make their program better. And in fact, ultimately expand the program. Because I do believe that for us to solve the problems that we have in our city, we have to think bigger. And uh, as uh, Councilman Pink had alluded to tonight, I think uh, with the success that they've experienced to date uh, with a new principal, uh, with the programs that we envision incorporating uh, starting next year. I do believe that this is an opportunity for us to do something very ex exciting and very special at, at uh, Bruford Jameson. Uh, one of the things that we've done there, uh, we've incorporated a program um, in partnership with uh, St. Benedict's Prep out of Newark, New Jersey. Uh, they have a very strong track record. They've been educating young men of color for the last 50 years. 98% uh, of their students go on to college. 85% of their students graduate in four years. And that's the kind of programs that we should be exploring here in Baltimore City for young men of color in our city. 
I do think that there is an opportunity if we stay focused and if we look beyond the norms and think bigger about how to solve the problems that we have. And I do think uh, the fact that we've got this situation at Buford Jamison where we have the only all-male STEM school in the state, I believe. Uh, many jurisdictions have implemented similar programs throughout the country. I think it's a, it's a model that we should try to embrace and emulate and ultimately expand. I do think that we have an opportunity to really impact our city if we are intentional, intentional about how we educate young men in our city. I think that is the biggest challenge that we face in our city. And as a business person uh, that is involved with the hiring of numerous people in our, in our city, uh, that's what the business community is looking for. We are the end user, if I may. And the product that the school uh, produces in fine young women and men is something that the business community is really looking forward to happening if we expect our city to continue to expand from an economic development standpoint as well as, as our culture in our city. So thank you. Just one. Thank you for taking the time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to welcome Mark Washington. Nice to see you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, before I start, uh, let me just say I know uh, each of you to be very good people. What I'm about to read is not necessarily an indictment of you all personally, but it is an indictment of the system. We have a math problem, a very difficult math problem. According to the Baltimore City Public School System, their school utilization project projections assume an increased population over the next 10 years for the census tracts that feed Abbotston, the stadium school, and wait for it, Coldstream. One would rightly theorize that even if the school system's data did not account for an increase in student population at Coldstream, the need would still exist to lessen the anticipated overcrowding at Abbotston by zoning additional students to Coldstream. In fact, according to U.S. Census projections, the two Chum Census tracts that feed into both Coldstream and Abbotston supports the school system's projections. It shows a total of 448 kids aged 0 to 5. Even with a conservative estimate, that would mean 90 new pre-K students per year to divide between the two schools, rendering the school system's recommendation to close the school moot and its rationale for doing so a little disingenuous. What's even more disingenuous is that in order to make the math fit their need for closing, the school system engaged in a most deceptive practice. They disappeared 35 children from the ranks of the school. These children make up one of the most needed and prized pre-K programs in the community. Using bookkeeping sleight of hand to justify their need, the school system knowingly did not count or factor these children into the student population at Coldstream. This action, while not prescribed, clearly exhibits an attempt by the school system to muddy the waters and cloud the facts. It demonstrates a level of deceit to fit their own agenda and clearly demonstrates a willing and wanton disregard for the early childhood development of the children of the Coldstream Homestead Bonneville community. But it does get worse. As if the school system's attack on our youngest and most vulnerable weren't enough, there's another equally vulnerable po population that Coldstream serves that the school system needs to terminate, the Autistic Learners Program. As difficult and challenging as it is for children without autism to adjust to changing environments, imagine how much more difficult it is for children with autism. The fact that this program is not being given weighted benefit by the school system isn't of itself shameful and shows of how little import these children with special needs really are to the system. This is all too familiar. We've seen this before the unnecessary disruption to the stability and lives of our youngest and most vulnerable by a school system with a proven propensity to mismanage funding 
is unfortunately not new. Balancing the backs, the books on the backs of children, also unfortunately not new. This is a subtle form of child abuse. Because elementary and middle school funding is based on elementary models, they require larger numbers for them to survive. This school was set up to fail, which is also not new. Instead of fixing the problems in underperforming schools, the school system simply chooses to close them, ship the children elsewhere, and destroy the data. They can offer no data to support improved student outcomes by these closing and consolidation actions because none exist. These actions serve only one interest, the almighty dollar. Sacrificing smaller neighborhood schools with more manageable class sizes only makes sense if your first priority is to dollars and cents. We may never know the real reason why Coldstream has been targeted for closing, but one thing we do know, it sure ain't the math. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Alan Scott. Hello, my daughter's a graduate from Coldstream Elementary School. My name is Alan Scott. I'm going to read. Uh, I've been in Coldstream, residing in the Chum community for over 19 years, and we've had two children grow in Cold Spring Park Elementary School from pre-K until their graduation from the sixth grade. At that time, Cold Spring was converted from an... Just got oh, okay. Through, ah, excuse me. Okay. Just continue. Finish yeah, at, that, at that time, Cold Spring Park was converted from an elementary school to elementary middle school, but I transferred my daughter to the stadium school for the middle school going against the teacher's wishes because Cold Spring was not, in my opinion, ready to be a middle school. And many parents were also not ready for the change to the middle school. And then we have two small children trying to find a school with pre-K in the Chum community or surrounding schools was not easy. I was informed that Abbotson did not have a pre-K while Cold Stream did during my search. To close the elementary school and to incorporate it with Abbotson would not benefit this community. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Um, hi, my name is Aaliyah Scott, and like my father said, I'm a former student from Cold Stream. So my father informed me that Cold Stream was closing the foundation, the elementary school. I was overwhelmed with devastation and confusion because all I could see is that you're practically kicking out these students that was under the sixth grade, including my little brother who attends the school right now. So more than 11 years ago, I began pre-K at this school. I grew up in this school, developed, and basically sprouted there. When I was in elementary school, I would never thought I would have to listen to others like myself advocating to keep this elementary school. Coldstream is not just a school. It is a home, my home, and thousands of other students in home. It is a background of who I am and I of who I am because I would not be where I'm at today without the lessons learned at this school. Right now I am a junior at Baltimore Polytechnic Institute and I graduated in 2019, which is right around the corner. So in two year, in two years I will be in college majoring in biomedical engineering. I will be a biomedical engineer in less than ten years. And you know my journey started at Coldstream Park at Coldstream Park Elementary School not Coldstream Park Elementary Middle School. Others like myself urge you to reconsider the, reconsider the decision you are planning to execute. I'm not sure if this still exists, but when I was a student there, we had a school song. Every, every week we would stand and I would sing, we believe our future starts at Coldstream. Teach us well and we will lead the way. The elementary school could take students that will be your future. They will grow to be your doctor, lawyer, surgeon, teacher, account, accountant. And I learned so much there. And again, I just urge you to reconsider this decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Kalia Mobley.
Hello, my name is Claire Mobley. I am here today to ask you to please keep my school open. All my sisters have gone to this school before me and we, before me. And we have enjoyed our time here and have learned a lot. My teachers always make sure that they help me. Sometimes I am not comfortable asking questions, but my teacher always seems to know when I need help. They have made my learning very easily. Please keep the school open to allow myself and... Start over. <laughs> open to allow myself and younger sister to learn. Thank you. I'd like to invite Kramer Finney. That's a great name. Kramer Finney. Do I have to push this button? You're good. You're good. You're good. My name is Kamal Finney, and I am a student at Coaching Park Elementary Middle School. I am new this year, but I have several reasons why our, school, why our school should stay open. One reason is because the teachers are very helpful and really care for us. They have taught me so many interesting things. For example, I had some problems with writing. Now I can write a good, well-developed paragraph. I also get lots of good, challenging homework that helps me to keep up with the skills I'm learning. <clears throat> My math teacher makes learning fun and interesting. Now I have mastered the division process. The rest of the staff is also awesome. They seem to care about the students. And I, and I think that they are very passionate about their job. So far, I have been to school every day this year, and I plan to keep my and I plan to keep up my perfect attendance. Finally, I will be in middle school next year, and my sister will be in elementary school. I have a I have a problem picking her up. That is why we should keep the school open. And it will also be very inconvenient if we close the school. Please let us keep our school the way it is. I'd like to welcome Jeremiah Moore. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Jeremiah Moore. I go to the school called Coastal Park Elementary Middle School. I am I am going to talk to you about keeping my school open. I want to keep my school open I so a lot of other students can join us here. I've been doing my work and keeping my grades up. I am a hard working person and all of my teachers encourage me to, to try harder and harder. When I am stuck on a problem, I am still trying my best to solve it. I have been to the school since kindergarten and I am in fourth grade now. So that is a long time and I have learned a lot this school, in this school. I just missed one day so far, so this is why we should keep my school open. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. <laughs> Some good logic there. I'd like to welcome Eric Cobb. How you doing, Eric? By the way, Eric, Eric, before you start, all the students at Coalstream who you've stayed late, 
I want you to know when you go in tomorrow, you can tell your teachers that the CEO said you did your homework tonight by presenting, okay? So whatever you didn't finish, you tell them you got a pass from me, okay? Okay. Okay, Eric. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Cobb. I come from the school, Cold Stream Park, elementary, middle school, and I'm in the fourth grade. And I am wishing to keep our school open. I have several reasons why. One reason is that our teachers really care for us to reach our goals. Another reason is that my education is important to my future. I am also new at Cold Stream, and so far I really like the school. And our principal, Miss Spencer, is very nice and keeping us safe every day. Also, Miss Spencer is doing a very good job of being our principal. I used to not know some words, but when I met my reading teacher, I learned a lot of words. I also learned a lot in math. So far, I have mastered long division. Please help us. Keep our school open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. I'd like to welcome Brooke Johnson. gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Brooke Johnson and today I'm going to tell you why we should keep Caution Park Elementary Middle School right where it is. First of all, we should keep it where it is because if we move it, the teachers will have to find another job and that's not easy to do. Next, I have a lot of memories in this school. I had a lot of funny moments and I had a lot of sad moments. But that's not the point. The point is the teachers here are very nice and they teach us everything we need to learn so we can do well on the iReady and Park assessments. We have learned a lot so far this year. Some of the things I learned this year are a long division and determining the themes of different texts. I have been going to this school for a very long time. This is my very first school and the reason why I did not leave it because it I feel like this is my home and I'm their kid. Culture and Park Elementary Middle School is my family and it would be a blessing if you did not take them away from me. What I'm really trying to say is Culture and Park Elementary Middle School should stay where it is because we are one big happy family. And if I and if they take it away from me, I will have to find new friends and new teachers. Uh, Tiona Hutchins, I'm sorry, my microphone was off. You're good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Tiana Hutchins. I am here today to ask you to please leave our school open. Coldstream has taught us a lot, and we have many teachers that are more than just teachers to us. They look out for us and treat us as our own as they're our own children. We have even had events on the weekends that teachers have given up their personal time to help us. I didn't realize how special our teachers were until I talked to friends at other schools and all I heard was compliments about their teachers. I realize now how special my teachers are and I'm asking you not to take them away from us. I know they have made a difference in my education and even after I graduated, I know they will be able to help others if you give them a second chance. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Thank you for coming. I want to acknowledge that we've gone past the 9 o'clock hour. I, I would like to continue. We've got a lot of young people here, so um, we're going to continue. I'd like to welcome Talai 
Talia Wilson. Hello. Hello, Board of Education. I love Coldstream. My name is Talia Wilson. I am currently a student at Coldstream Park Elementary and Middle School, and I am a seventh grader. I am here to tell you that I will fight for the school I love. I have been here since pre-K and I can tell you that it's been quite a journey. This school is like a third home to me. Why would you want to take that away from not only me but other kids who love to go there? Besides, there are te teachers here from Polly, aka My Dream High School, that could help kids or prepare kids for the real world. Not only do we have that, but we have teachers who care what we do in life. You don't get teachers like that anymore. So I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart, please don't close down our school. We are focused now. I'm actually, I actually know what my already scores are and my V180. My, my teacher even helped me understand my park scores. I know Ms. Spencer and my middle school teachers care about us. We finally have a real science teacher this year. I can't imagine not having my middle school teachers around to help me or my old elementary teachers to encourage me. I beg you, don't close down Coldstream and make us a distant memory. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Amani Bishop. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay. I love Coastream. The reason why I love Coastream is because this is the first school I went to. I came to Coastream in pre-K, and it's been pretty good. I have friends here, good teachers, and some good principals. This school has been here for many years. We have teachers here that went to good high schools and colleges. I think that they can guide us to go to a good high school. We have a lot of great memories here from when we were little up until now. We have experienced a lot and learned a lot of things. You should keep Coldstream open so kids from other schools can come here and experience what we have experienced and the fun we had. Plus, our attendance is better and we have a new principal who is better, who is better in helping us learn. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Ayana Bremfield. I love Coldstream. Do you? Hello. My name is Ayana Bremfield. I attend Coldstream Park Elementary Middle School. I am currently a new student here. I am a seventh grader. I want to save Coldstream. The reason why I want to is because I have been here since pre-K and I know I matter. It was amazing. It was not just boring. Teachers made it fun and not hard to learn. Also, we have down the show, movie days, and field trips. The teachers are not mean at all. They do not respect other others. That's why we should save Coldstream. They help get the job done. I don't want Coldstream to be forgotten because the adults want to play the numbers of games with my education. There is nowhere nowhere in America that says if he brings schools together that their test scores will increase. Our new principal has been helping us focus but on our test scores and attendance. We deserve other another chance so I can graduate from Coldstream, not Stadium. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Diona Hutchins. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Deanna Hutchins. I'm here today to ask that you don't close our school down. I have to admit, I'm not that easy to work with, but my teachers are nice to me and support me. They do their best to make sure that I learn my lessons and stay out of trouble. My classes that used to be hard, now they're easy now. 
they really are helpful people and really are pleasable. And they are, when I need help, they will help me. And I'm thankful to have Coach Green Park near my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome Nicole Elmore. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. The school song for Cold Scream is, we believe that Cold Scream is our future. Teach our kids well and they will lead the way. I'm a parent, I'm a mother of six. I'm a single mother of six. My oldest three kids graduated from Cold Screen. They now attend Bowie. I have two in Bowie and one attends Towson. When my son was in the sixth grade, they wanted to know who was his math teacher, who taught him, because they wanted to move him to the eighth grade. He learned that teaching from Cold Screen Park. From Cold Screen Park. We're a family at Cold Screen Park. The teachers love our kids there. It's amazing when you walk in Cold Screen, the teachers know our kids by name. We have a new principal now, and I'm so excited when I walk into Cold Screen Park. You can feel the love. You can feel the positivity. You can feel the inspiration because kids are inspired to learn and grow from Cold Screen Park. And I know you've heard many voices here tonight, many voices. I just ask you just to listen to your heart and keep the schools open for our kids because they are our future. They are our future. Cold Scream has given me hope as a parent. And when they have the family meetings and when they have the community lunches and they have the community breakfast and the community dinners for our children and we as parents, we come in with our children and we're able to relate. When they provide jobs for the single mothers that's out there, whether you're coming to the school just to volunteer, it means a lot. It means a lot. And as a parent here tonight, I ask you to listen with your heart. Listen with your heart for our children because they are our future. Cold Screen Park. Cold Screen Park. Cold Screen Park to where every child feels loved to where every child know that if they don't have a meal, Cold Screen Park. To where every child knows someone looks out for them, Cold Screen Park. To where every child that walks from Cold Screen to go home, there is teachers out there walking that child home because we don't know what children face in the city of Baltimore. Cold Screen Park. Cold Screen Park. I have three kids that's in college, two in Bowie and one in Towson. Cold Screen Park. I have three now that's sitting back here. Cold Screen Park. Listen with your hearts. I understand what's going on, but listen with your hearts. Cold Screen Park. Let's keep it open. And I volunteer all the time. I'm there 24-7, and I work a full-time job. Because they matter. The kids matter. The single parents matter. I mean, you need hope and you need someone to believe in you, doesn't matter where it comes from. Just as long as somebody says, I believe in you, and you can get up from your situation. Call Screen Park. My name is Nicole Elmore. Thank you for your time. God bless you. I'd like to welcome, I'd like to welcome Joyce Shade. I came out, <clears throat> my name is Joy Shade. Um, I came out to support Cold Screen. I, I work for Baltimore City Health Department in Cold Screen Park in the health suite. I see a lot of the kids there. Well, I see just about all of them. Um, they share a lot. We all are there. We work as a team. We have some new staff, and I love their thing. It takes a village, because it does. Um, please give us a chance to prove ourselves. Please keep Cold Screen open. Very brief. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I'd like to welcome Bernard Pearsall. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I just want to first of all say thank you to all of you for still being here after 9 o'clock to still hear everybody's voices and concerns. Um, I was here at the last meeting, but I didn't get a chance to speak on behalf of my family and my son, Jordan Pearsall, for Independence Local 101. Uh, I'm here as a concerned parent, father, and family of three, three sons in the school system. I'd like to humbly ask the board to reconsider their nomination for Independence Local 101 for closure. My oldest has made it through as a graduate, and um, my next in line is the reason why I'm here tonight. Independence is offering an opportunity and an experience for our youth that can't be put into words. It just simply can't be put into words. A lot of people have been here tonight and in the past speaking on behalf of Independence, but um, whatever it is, it's working. Um, my son is motivated to go to school each day. Like, he's motivated to the point where I have associates that I work with at my job that don't get up and get their butt there on time every day like he does. Um, if you know, like I know, it's hard to get a 15-year-old boy motivated to do just about anything other than a video game these days. Um, I might still have to ask him to wash the dishes or take out the trash or something, but every day he's up on time getting ready to go to that school. Um... There's a serious breakthrough being made with the students at that school. Um, the opportunities that they have, the situations that they face, the, the problems that the teachers put before them, they, they all seem to just come together and solve it. Um, there's not just administrative and faculty representing, but the number of students that have come out and so much support in the last two meetings is it's just unmentionable. They have also have a petition, a petition started that we all signed up for, um, also to help out with the school. Um, the student-teacher relationship is there. The small class size is there. Um, you can be weird and indifferent and still find out that you fit in more than you know. How many times have we all been in school and felt like that weird kid or felt like something wasn't going to work or you felt like somebody was picking on you or whatever? It, it, it matters. Independence matters. Um, in short, it works. I mean, when schools are shut down, opportunities for these kids are shut down. You know, nobody wins from that. Nobody wins from that. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice to see your family. Thank you. This is Drew Pearson. Thank you all very much for staying late. We really appreciate this. Uh, the school that I want to talk to about is Lois T. Mary. My name is Gwen Pearson. I'm a grandmom. And this is my daughter-in-law, Yolanda Day. And she was the one that gave me these great grandkids that I want to talk to you all about. <laughs> Transitioning from elementary school to middle school can, can be tough for any kid. For my two 10-year-old artistic nonverbal grandchildren now comfortably attending Lois T. Mary Special Education Elementary Middle School transition itself is very difficult. Through a grade configuration, Lois T. is to be changed from K to 8 to K to 5. The Baltimore City Board is asking my 12, my twin 10-year-old artistic grandchildren to tra transition from elementary school straight to high school. Besides the giant transition leap for each grandchild, I have a different concern. <clears throat> My little sweet granddaughter, <laughs> she's affected with a condition related to autism called elopement. 
Elopement means that if she sees the opportunity to run away, she will. Elopement is the number one killer of autistic children. That is why Lois T with this contained environment and heightened sense of security is reassuring to our family. Just simple things like most schools wouldn't be sensitive like a large window that show the full playground accommodating more eyes when the children are outside playing. My handsome little grandson, he can give you the most charming smile. But he sometimes reacts to transition with an upset. Transition can be overwhelming for him. The Baltimore City School District is asking for him to transition to a high school next year, then the year after, to a new high school yet to be, develop, uh, to be built. The current A to K to 8 grade con configuration gives him more time to develop coping skills with transition. Lois T is successfully working with building those behavior and social skills towards its maturity. Lastly, I'm concerned about my nonverbal children who next year, next school year, will be 11 year olds going to school with 21 year old adults. Merlin special needs students attend school until they are 21. That means that by sending 11 year old children to a high school, they will be schooled with 21 year old adults. My grandchildren are not only kids, but because of their autism and being nonverbal, are quite highly vulnerable and need extra care and protection, which they are now getting in a very quality way with Lois T. So I want to thank you all, and I want you all to just bring those considerations into effect. The parents of um, Lois T. Mary have asked me to deliver uh, a letter into the record for them. They're asking that at the minimum, please don't make them trans position to one school next year and then to another school. So they're saying, like, at least give them one more year at Lois T. Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Our final guest this evening is Wendell Harrison. I love your hair. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm here to speak on the behalf of William Pender Hughes. This is my daughter's second year with William Pender Hughes. Uh, she went there for pre-K, and now she's in kindergarten. I love the school. Great school. Great teachers. Great principal. Mr. Adams, he's all about the kids. And he worked with me. 1,000. I'm a single parent, and I just I can't say enough about William Penley Hughes. It's a great school. Please don't close the school, and it's convenient. It's not far from the house, and I'm more than sure it's convenient for a whole lot of other students. But please don't close the school. That's it. Do you, oh. Sweetie Pie, do you want to say something to us? You want to say something? What you want to yeah, say? Yeah, you sure do. <laughs> Could you be cute? I want to say I love the school. Thank you. And all your teeth. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for also, coming and thank you for staying. I love all the schools. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and her second report card, her first one, perfect. Second one, perfect. She was on the honor roll. So I just... I love the school. Please don't close the school. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks to everyone for coming. The people that are here still, the people that were here all evening, um, we really do appreciate that you took your time to, to talk to us. As I said at the first meeting, I'll say it again tonight, you've been heard. It matters a lot uh, for us to get these perspectives. Um, I just want to remind everybody of the next steps. Um, as Dr. Santelisis reminded, said early on, there's still conversations and deliberations and visits and um, meetings going on um, in addition to the testimony. Um, the planned vote on the portfolio recommendations is at the next board meeting, which is next Tuesday, December 19th at 6 p.m. Uh, in the event of inclement weather, oh God, I hope not, uh, the reschedule, <laughs> just saying. 
um, the rescheduled meeting will be held on uh, Wednesday, December 20th at 6 p.m., um, also in this building. So um, with that, I'd like to entertain a motion to close the meeting. Moved by Commissioner High Cupboard, seconded by Commissioner Berkeley. Um, all in favor? Commissioners Berkeley, Hassan, High Cupboard, Kashani, Chinia, Frank, Bondima. Uh, meeting is closed by a vote of seven to seven and two absent. Thank you very much, everybody. At 9.30. Have a nice evening.